so I got a little bit of money in my budget this month related to this finger or <laughs> I, I don't even know what finger it is but look it has to do with a ring and this and a finger okay so let's get into it hi I'm Shane of the Well Five and I create videos to help you eliminate debt grow your income and build wealth and we are in a new month so it's time to talk about my budget for October and I've been using budgeting since October 2017 so I'm in the game three years now and through budgeting I've been able to pay off close to $60,000 of debt so let's get straight into my budget and see what I'm spending my money on this month in order to start budgeting you have to know how much money you're working with so for the month of October I'm actually working with a little bit more money despite the fact that I have less sources of income so last month I was teaching at two universities as an adjunct faculty member but starting this month I'm only teaching at one despite the fact that I still technically have that job I'm just not teaching for this term so I won't be teaching from October November and December at the other university because I chose not to teach there I'm only teaching at one university for the next few few months so that's you know why my income sources have dropped but the reason why my income has increased this month really has to do with my primary job so I get paid on a bi-weekly basis from my primary job and in the month of October there are three paydays in October so that's the reason why I'm getting more money this month but it's not because you know I made more money or I have more income sources or you know anything like that. It's just the fact that there's three paydays, but that's good for me. I like the three payday months <laughs> when they do pop around. I think there are only two every year. I think once in October and once in August. So that's just what's going on this month. And so as a result, I'll be making sixteen thousand three hundred and thirty-seven dollars this month in income. And so yeah let's get straight into my expenses now my first category of expenses is with giving so i give about 11 percent of my income and majority of that goes towards tithing because i tithe 10 percent, and then the remaining one percent just goes towards a sinking fund for gifts such as christmas gifts or birthday gifts and as a matter of fact my brother's birthday he's turning 30 this year it falls in October, so I'm going to have to use a little bit of that money to be able to get him a gift, if he even wants a gift. But yeah, 11% comes from that giving category. The next category of expenses in my budget is related to savings and investment. So for this month, it went up a little bit to 59%. And so I actually did something a little different this month with my savings and investments. So I decided that I no longer wanted to contribute to my traditional IRA with each bi-weekly bi paycheck. I decided that since I had all the money that I needed in a savings account to be able to max out my 2020 contributions, which is $6,000 for an individual person like me, I decided you know, to just take the money and put it into the account instead of like slowly accumulating the money with each paycheck because it would take me a lot longer to be able to invest in certain mutual funds or index funds and just be able to invest and make money faster because people who are in the market right now are making lots of money and so i can't really invest you know into the funds that i really wanted to invest in by slowly contributing so i just made an executive decision to just go ahead and take the money out of my savings and then max out my contributions into my traditional ira which i then will convert over into a backdoor roth ira which i have to do because of my income because i exceed the income limits for a roth ira so i decided to do that and as a result um, of the bi-weekly paychecks, I'm actually going to contribute an extra $3,000 this month into my savings account. So that's part of the reason why my, uh, my investments went up this month. Um, the other reason is because I readjusted my tax withholdings um, just a few days ago, actually, because I knew that I was 
taking tax or withholding taxes from my previous or the 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 teaching job that I had last month and from this job and I know I was over contributing for taxes and I wanted to make sure that I had a zero tax liability at the end of the 2020 year. So by redoing my tax withholdings that means that I'm taking home more money each paycheck and so that means that I just have more money to save. So that's why my savings and investments have gone up 59%. So I'm super excited about that because I'm saving a huge chunk of money nowadays. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so the next category of expense in my budget is related to housing. So 10% is my housing. I live in a three bedroom two and a half bath townhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. The rent is $1,600 and I also pay renter's insurance, um, but that's the same amount every single month. Now the next category of expense is related to utilities. So that's only 2% for this month and that is with the water, electricity, um, my cell phone bill, and I feel like is there something else? I'm looking at my budget here. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, and cable. Do I pay cable? Oh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> I have cable down, but it's really Wi-Fi because it's through Comcast. But yeah, those are my four different bills that are come through that are related to utilities. And so I spend two percent of my income on that. And so actually, for this month, my electricity bill went down one dollar <laughs> so i'm really excited about that i'm trying to figure out other ways that my electricity can go down more and i know so far this month i haven't been using like the ac as much because the temperatures outside are pretty pretty mild so the the ac hasn't chipped in um that much this year so i'm hoping for an even cheaper electricity bill next month so yeah all right, so the next category of expenses related to food is 5%. Nothing really has changed with my food budget. So I spend about um, close to $700, $680 on a meal plan, which I told you guys about um, last month. I'd get um, meals made for me um, and delivered to me from this company named Fresh and Lean and it has helped me to lose a lot of weight. And so right now I'm just trying to maintain my weight, but I do want to lose some more weight and I'm considering getting a Peloton, but I don't know, it's kind of expensive. Um, I might go a cheaper route, but I'm trying to figure out how else I can incorporate um, exercise into my diet, but we're talking about food here right now. So in terms of the food, I spend $680 a month to get weekly, um, get meals delivered to me weekly and I get 14 meals every every week but I've been looking into cheaper alternatives I found this other company called I think freshly was it I think it was called freshly and I could save I think 20 to 30 dollars a week going with their meal plan so I think I'm gonna try that out I think I'm gonna pause my meal plan with fresh and lean and try out freshly and see if I can, you know, save a couple of dollars when it comes to my meals. But yeah, the meal plan is $680 right now. Plus I spent about an extra hundred dollars on food. Um, and yep, that's it for, for food. Then the next category in my budget is related to transportation. So my only transportation expenses are really just related to sinking funds that I, you know, I basically stock up or put build up my reserves in those sinking funds for my car insurance um what else for gas and uh, for maintenance and actually not even car insurance so in my transportation category i only count the maintenance and the gas and i don't drive that often but i put about 140 dollars toward maintenance and gas every single month so yeah that stays pretty relatively stable now the next category is related to health. So this budget category also went up a little bit this month. So it's at 6%. So in the month of October, I have to have a procedure done um, at my doctor. And because I have a, um, a high deductible insurance plan, which allows me to have an HSA, 
I um, have to meet my deductible first before they pay for certain procedures or pay 90% of it. And so this procedure I would have to pay either using my HSA or just pay out of pocket. And because I use my HSA as an investment vehicle, I don't take funds out of my HSA to pay for medical expenses. I pay for them out of pocket. And so they called me and told me that the procedure was gonna cost $400. So I'm gonna to have to pay $400 for that procedure, which will be at the end of the month. But then the other thing that I put under here is counseling. So I'm going to start counseling. Mike and I, Mike is my boyfriend, are going to start pre-engagement counseling. So um, we actually got to pay for it today, as a matter of fact, <laughs> if we want to start on time. Um, but we're going to start this counseling. We heard about it, or I actually heard about it from a friend. She told me that um, her friend, I actually know the girl too. We all went to college together, but she told me that she um, did pre-engagement counseling and she loved it. She actually broke up with her boyfriend because of it. I'm hoping that that's not the case for us, <laughs> but um, I like the idea of it. Um, the idea, I guess, is that you will go a little bit deeper um, and make decisions about whether or not to get engaged and to get married based off of pre-engagement counseling. Whereas with premarital counseling, I guess the assumption is that you've already decided that you wanted to marry a person. So you kind of like tick the boxes of like, okay, let's talk about finances. Let's talk about, you know, X, Y, and Z. But you don't really explore other things that might shake the relationship. And so that's kind of like the idea of pre-engagement counseling to like make sure that everything is solid so that you can then make a good decision about do you want to get engaged? And then you can do premarital counseling after that to prepare you for marriage. So we're doing something that's kind of like unconventional, and but I'm excited about it. We already had our consultation meeting um, a few weeks ago, and uh, we start on Monday. <laughs> and the cost of that is a thousand dollars, but we're splitting it between the two of us. So I added that to my health budget. So then insurance is that one percent. And the cool thing about my insurance is this month is when I um, pay my six month premium and my six month premium went down from, I think it was $911 to now $804. They, I guess, randomly decided that they wanted to charge me less, which I'm all for, okay? <laughs> because I think I bet spend too much money on car insurance. Um, I did look into other policies, but in order to get cheaper policies, I would have to be registered in the state of Georgia. Right now, my car is registered in the state of Florida. And I did try to register in the state of Georgia, but because my tags are in Florida, they actually switched it over back to a Florida policy. And so that's why I spend more money. But um, in Georgia, the insurance is cheaper, but because of my car being a relatively newer car, they actually charge you a tax for newer vehicles to be registered in the state of Georgia. And so I would end up spending about the same amount of money, but I think by next year, it would be cheaper for me overall to then switch my, my registration to Georgia. So I'm gonna look into that because I think I can drop my insurance down to like $400 by registering in the state of Georgia. But obviously I have to pay that tax first. But the money that I spend this month um, on my insurance will be coming from a sinking fund that I've already set up that I always fund every single month. So now I'm gonna be funding the sinking fund a little bit less because my six month premium has dropped. So that's really exciting. And then personal is 3%, entertainment is 1%, and then my debts are 4%. And as I mentioned, I'm back into credit card debt. I mentioned this in the last video. Um, I'm back into credit card debt because I decided to buy a couch and a coffee table through my PayPal credit. And so um, the, the coffee table actually was delivered today and the couch is getting delivered on Wednesday. So I'm super excited about that. But I spend, I don't know, I think, Let's see what I got here. I spend about $600 a month um, on whatever. I don't think that's right. That's not right. You know why it's not right? Because I decided to just pay off the, the coffee table. So I'm gonna be done with paying off the coffee table, but then the couch, I'll continue to pay 
for the next six months and I pay $250 a month um, at zero percent interest and by March I will be uh, completely paid or pay off that debt completely that's it for my budget let me know what you're doing with your money this month how you're you know being able to save and invest or pay off debts using your budgeting strategies so i appreciate you for watching and check out my next video